Hello, for today's video we are going to look at a way in which we can study the organelles that are present inside cells um, and it's a way that's different to using our uh, microscopy that we've talked about before. It's different to using uh, a, transmi a transmission electron microscope or a scanning electron microscope in that uh, with an electron microscope we can get a nice picture that looks a bit like this where you can see all the different organelles but you can't do much more than actually look at them. And the other problem with using uh, a TEM is that we have to uh, do a lot of preparation of the sample uh, which might cause a disruption of the sample and might even destroy bits and pieces. Um, we don't actually get to see what the organelles are actually doing but we do get a very good idea of what they look like. Now another method of studying these types of organelle is by using something called fractionation and ultra centrifugation. Now fractionation just basically means to uh, break up Ultracentrifugation is all about spinning our sample of organelles in order to separate them out into different parts that we can study. So we've got breaking up and spinning in order to separate these separate out these organelles. And how is it done? Well, we have an instrument called a centrifuge or an ultra centrifuge. Uh, it actually looks a bit like this. This is a desktop one that you could just find in a lab, uh, fits on top of a desk, and we would use it to spin our samples. Diagrammatically, you may see it uh, drawn very simply uh, like this. And the way it actually works is we have our test tubes full of our uh, cell parts and we can stick the test tube into here. We need one in each side just to balance out the weight and this is spun very fast to separate out the different parts. But we can't just um, chuck in some tissue and start spinning it. That's not going to work. We need to actually do some prep beforehand. So what I've got here is what's supposed to be a piece of liver liver is a common tissue that's uh, studied because it has uh, high metabolism has lots of different organelles that can be viewed um, but we have our uh, piece of liver and the first thing we need to do is to put it in what we call a buffer solution so this would be our buffer and we put our sample in there now there's a very good reason why we need to use a buffer firstly it's um, protects against changes in pH so if we've got a sudden change in pH uh, in the sample there due to the fact that we've broken it all up and released the contents of the different organelles perhaps um, the buffer will help to keep that pH steady so there is a little damage done to the organelles but we also need to make sure that this is isotonic isotonic no iso tonic and this actually means that the concentration of the solution here is exactly the same as the contents of the cells uh, in the tissue that way we won't have water moving in by osmosis or water moving out by osmosis because that could either cause the organelles to shrink or it could cause the organelles to actually burst and, and become destroyed and therefore we can't really uh, use them very well okay so the solution is isotonic um, and it's also a a buffer protecting against changes in pH. Now there is one more condition that we have to observe and that is we have to keep the temperature quite low so we would do the whole of this actually in some ice water and once we get this in the ice water we can then start chopping up with a knife our sample of liver and we have uh, tinier pieces and the reason we need to do it in ice at such a cold temperature is because we want to uh, prevent the action of enzymes. If you imagine the enzymes do very specific jobs inside the cells, uh, sometimes they actually are encompassed within other within organelles and if we release all these enzymes and set them free um, they might do damage. One type of uh, organelle that could possibly release an enzyme that would do damage if you remember is the lysosome. And the lysosome has the job of actually destroying uh, old worn out parts of cells um, and if we then suddenly released all these enzymes that could actually damage the cells all the organelles that we are trying to study so we have to have the temperature very low in order to prevent these enzymes from actually causing any damage to the tissue or to the cells or to the organelles okay so once we have uh, chopped it up inside our uh, cold buffer solution we then have to what we call homogenize it and this is to do with our fractionation sometimes we call it fractionating sometimes we call it homogenizing but this is basically done 
through uh, the use of just a maybe ordinary blender um, or just a pestle and mortar type of uh, apparatus where we grind up the tissue even further and what we end up with then is what we call a homogenate and this homogenate should hopefully have a whole bunch of intact organelles that we can then separate out to uh, study. So the next step after we've done that, we won't have a, a, a clear homogenate. We will have some bits and pieces in there that we don't want. So the next point, uh, the next stage is to filter. And the reason why we filter is to actually remove any cell debris, any bits and pieces in there um, that are going to uh, interfere with our separation process or things that uh, won't be very useful to us. So we filter out to remove any debris or any parts that we don't want and then we can start the process of centrifugation and this is what we were talking about using our machine that we just talked about uh, a minute ago. Okay so um, how does this actually work? Well what we do is we can uh, spin our homogenate in our centrifuge and we start off by spinning at a very low speed and by a low speed um, we measure it in this unit called G's and G actually stands for gravitational force so 1G is the normal gravitational force that you feel uh, on planet Earth you are now being pulled towards the ground with a force of 1G uh, if we doubled that force we'd call it 2G and if we uh, had 10 times that force we'd call it 10G the idea of spinning actually increases that g-force so if we spin it at a low speed we can actually then start to separate out the different parts now by low speed we're talking about creating a gravitational force of about a thousand g's um, and we'd spin that a thousand g's for maybe around about 10 minutes and what we would end up with is a small section or a small what we call pellet at the bottom here which has separated out due to this uh, spinning at a thousand G's. The reason why uh, this pellet separates out is because we get the heavier or the denser organelles falling uh, out first or being pushed to the to the bottom first and in this case it will be uh, organelles such as a nucleus or the nuclei. Uh, nuclei remember is the plural of uh, nucleus or sometimes if you're using plant cells you might see chloroplasts or um, organelles of that size and uh, weight okay so this is spun at a low speed thousand G's for about 10 minutes we get organelles such as this uh, we have our pellet uh, sometimes this is actually called the sediment but I think the more common phrase is the, is the pellet. And once we have that, we can then remove the uh, liquid, and we call that liquid the supernatant. So the liquid is the supernatant, and we have the sediment or the pellet at the bottom. And we could take that supernatant and put it into another test tube and spin it at slightly higher speeds and creating uh, G forces of around about three to maybe 4,000 G's again for around about 10 minutes and we get the next level of organelle separated out and this is usually the mitochondria remember chondria is plural chondrion is singular but we get organelles of the size and nature of the mitochondria and that's when you spin for another 10 minutes at 3 or 4000 G's again we have the supernatant and the pellet at the bottom right there and then what we can do is then go on to spin at higher speeds um, and by higher speeds we create a g-force of up to maybe even a hundred thousand uh, g's and this is then done for a much longer period of time this is done for nearer 60 minutes so for just about an hour and then we get the uh, tiniest organelles that are separated out or the least dense or the least heavy ones separated out in that final uh, spinning and these are the kinds of things or these are the kind of organelles that we get uh, ribosomes um, you remember these are the smaller of the organelles uh, that are present in the cell but we would need to spin at quite a high uh, speed for quite a long time in order to get these separated out there are other spin speeds as well which you might want to use to separate out a lysosomes for example this is something in between kind of uh, these two this is you would spin at maybe for 15 
or maybe 16,000 Gs for around about 20 minutes and you'd get the next level. Uh, but the point is we would spin at different speeds and each time you would get some supernatant and you would get the pellet. Now this pellet can then be taken away and studied and the advantage of that is that you can uh, actually see the organelles with any luck if you've done this well and properly these will still be uh, workable um, organelles in other words they still work you can and then you could then go on to do a whole bunch of different experiments to see how they actually work and actually a lot of information about how the organelles work has been um, done or discovered through this process here uh, which allows us to separate out the organelles from all the other organelles um, and see how they work without the interference of other organelles around which might not give us a clear picture of what's going on. So this is a summary of how it all works. Remember you need to be able to describe the process here why we have isotonic solutions in a buffer and why we have low temperatures and so on and you should have idea, uh, some idea of which of the organelles come out at which stage. Obviously not every single one and every single um, kind of uh, gravitational force or, or g-force that you would need but certainly an idea of the slightly bigger or bigger ones medium and smaller um, organelles okay so that's me done for this video thank you for watching and I will see you again very soon